Well, interestingly, in 2007, at the World Championships in Japan, um, Blonska had a competition of her life. And it was like, oh, that's not real. And I spoke up about it in the mix zone after the competition. I'd got third, Jess Ennis had come fourth. And I was like, she's taken away from Jess. We should have a silver and a bronze. And I spoke out quite a lot about it. And what was interesting about Tatiana Chernova is that she was um, world junior champion in 2006, came from nowhere. Um, but you could see she was, you know, she was Amazonian. She, she, she could do everything. She could run, jump and throw, but she was not always consistent. And so that was just before you thought everyone was, you know, I know it's a generalization that people from Russia took jogs, um, but her group, most of them have been banned now. Yeah, so um, Chernova was in a competition. She had a really bad one at the World Championships in 2007. She didn't make the second day. She absolutely was blowing on the first day, nowhere near anywhere, any of us. So when she came back in 2008 and performed so well and all her techniques were ugly, it wasn't nice to watch, it wasn't aesthetically pleasing. When you see someone compete, when, they, when they're winning, they do things nicely, technically good and efficient and you know, the drug cheats don't, they don't necessarily always do things nicely. And these two didn't. And so I always had my suspicions about her, but I just needed confirmation. And obviously a couple of years later, she got done. I mean, I was at a training camp in, in Florida, I was in Claremont and was coming home. It was the day I was coming home and I was just come out of the gym, I was in the change room and I got a tweet from a journalist, and it's never the way you should find out you potentially could win another Olympic medal, it was a tweet. And I just saw a barrage, I must have had probably about 150 notifications, and they were just coming, coming through, coming through, coming through. I felt like I was, is it disbelief? I couldn't believe it. Oh my God, I've won another Olympic medal. Well, I, you know, potentially I've won another Olympic medal. Then I got angry, then I got upset. So it was like all those emotions, like having four seasons in one day, and I, I, I can put my hand on my heart and said I was pretty probably bitter about my event from 08 up until the day I found out potentially I was going to have another medal because I felt that I hadn't achieved what I'd set out to do. In my, in my eyes, I should have probably been Olympic champion in 2008, but I had so many injuries that year and I didn't. So to come away with absolutely nothing was devastating. To, to finally get that medal, was obviously I'd had one like, like it um, a f two months before when I got the 4x4 four four medal, but I found the relay medals for me are just fun. That's just an added extra. It wasn't what I set out to do in my career. It was set out to win an individual medal. So when I got that at the Team GB Ball, presented by Hugh Robertson, it was an amazing experience. I think it probably meant more to me to receive it in front of three, 400 people in a small arena where everybody understood why I was getting it at that, that time. It was just a really special moment. So, and it was, you know, and all not that I'm all about me, <laughs> but all eyes were on me for those few moments. And it was, it was. So I was really proud. Um, yeah, and, and that moment will stay with me for the rest of my life. Um, you can receive a medal in an Olympic stadium. That's great, but not everyone's looking at you, not really understanding why you're getting a medal. Whereas this moment was very intimate, very special, and everyone knew why I was getting it. So it meant quite a lot and it's got a good story to it and it's a happy ending.